Good evening, and it's a beautiful evening here in Los Angeles. I should say the Hollywood Hills. You get to have a little view again tonight. You know, it's not so nice outside. I would try to do one of these in the daytime, but it's so hot here. We've been in this horrible heat wave. And on top of that, we have all these fires in LA. 18 of them, 18 fires going on. It's really horrible what's going on with the climate in crisis. You know, it's not just California, but the whole West Coast. My sister lives in Oregon and they're all smoky and barely can breathe. And thankfully where I am here, it's not too close to me, but still hour south and hour east and hour this way. And the whole skies of the West Coast are totally, totally ruined with smoke. And I even read an article that they're getting smoke all the way on the East Coast. Even in New York, they found some of the ashes because of some new phenomenon where they, where the energy takes the ashes up and it travels. So how sad, but there's so many people in the East suffering. Then there's the, you know, tornadoes and the hurricanes and the rains. And oh my gosh, the weather really is horrible and the climate really is in crisis and these fires make me think of all the poor people who've lost their homes and you know the animals the poor animals oh and just even in this heat wave around my house i see the squirrels they're like basically laying out on the sidewalks in in heat stroke it's terrible so you know we're putting little bowls of water out and oh I just I feel so so deeply for the animals you know they didn't do anything to deserve this they're not contributing to climate crisis like we are but anyways we just need to really keep everyone in our prayers right now because there's a lot of extreme weather out there and so I wanted to do this video at night because I just think it's pretty out and it makes for better scenery and it's just too hot in the daytime to even think about it and so I wanted to use this time to answer some questions and actually maybe we only go get through one question tonight that's my plan because I'm getting a lot of people emailing me and asking questions and you guys are gonna learn from their questions too but one thing before we start I want you to know first of all there's no such thing as diseases Diseases, that's just a man-made term, you know? I, I think it basically means that we don't know how you got this, but this is what it's called. And usually it's the name of some man who's died of that disease, right? But the problem is, is that once we believe in diseases, then we either get talked into, okay, I'm getting older and so this is normal, my health's breaking down or whatever the reason they may tell you you have it like autoimmune disease that's just never made sense to me why would my body attack itself that just doesn't make any sense but it's taught over and over and over again you know the same same generation teaches the next generation that generation teaches the next generation and it's just like a parrot they just parrot the same thing. Autoimmune disease is your body attacking itself. What? Why would my body attack itself? I mean, we're, my body, all of our bodies, it's so smart. The human body is amazing what it does. There's no way it's just going to attack itself. And for no understandable reason, I mean, they can't even explain why it starts attacking itself. Why is that? And then what, what's the treatment for that? Okay, so they put you on immunosuppressants because they say your immune system is running too high and so now we gotta turn off your immune system. Now think about this, they're gonna give you a drug that completely turns off your immune system. How does that sound? What if you get a flu? Okay, then you're gone. I just lost a friend like that last year. Honestly, he had Oh, what was it? He had psoriatic arthritis. You know that you see it on the TV commercials. You know, it's the one where they get horrible rheumatoid arthritis, but they get this terrible psoriasis with it too. And it's just horrible. And he, they gave him so much cortisone. I mean, this was a guy who was like 180 and all-star football player in our class. And next thing I know, when I saw him, he was 
I don't know, 400 pounds or something because he took so many steroids. It's such a sad story and he had a lot of grief. And so, you know, my feeling is, well, why didn't anybody treat his grief? You know, I finally connected with him after he had it and way after high school, but I had heard that he had it. And, and so I talked to him and then we started kind of keeping in touch. And as a homeopath, of course, I'm looking for the cause of, you know, why does someone get an autoimmune disease? But my first question to anybody with an autoimmune disease is, what happened right before you got that autoimmune disease? Tell me the year before, two years before, but especially the year before, what happened? Something happened in your life that was traumatic. And usually there's always a story there, you guys. There's a heartbreak, a grief, a divorce, a betrayal, a death, something. So it's not unusual to me that, you know, some horrible thing can happen after an emotional grief or trauma, something what, what could be catastrophic to, to many people, then our body goes in a kind of shock and it produces assertive symptoms. But is this a disease? Is having a grief a disease? Is, you know, having a divorce a disease? But, you know, we, we're just not trained in the medical field of how to deal with emotional imbalances or griefs or shocks or you know horrible like we we say like horrible news you know like somebody could be told some horrible news and then right after that they get sick we got to learn to deal with this stuff and it's not just like i need to deal with this emotionally this is when you need a homeopath because you need some homeopathic medicines to help you through these symptoms so i'm not saying that it's normal to be in such a horrible grief, but grief is normal, a certain amount of it, right? So for example, if you lost a partner and you were grieving for months, okay, that would be normal. Even if you lost anybody, a parent, a best friend, a child, or whatever, you would be grieving for a long time and that's normal. But what if 10 years goes by and you're still grieving? Sorry, you guys, that's my computer because that's where I'm going to read my email from. So, but what if 10 years went by and you're still in such a horrible grief that you're not functioning, that you, you can't get out of bed, you're crying every day. That's not normal. That needs help. So once we've gone beyond the point of, I don't even like the word normal, but beyond when something's a little far out of, you know, um, how it, how it, how it should be so that we can function, right? There's, there's a certain amount of, you know, there's always balance, right? There's a certain amount that's okay. And there's, we cross that edge a little and we're too far on the other side and we go this way and we cross it a little and we're too far on that side. And so life is always about trying to get balanced. You know, there's always two sides. It's like the duality of life, you know, and it's, good and there's bad and there's evil and the light and then there's right and there's wrong I mean there's always two sides there's tall and there's short and so we always have to learn as best we can to try to find a way emotionally to stay in balance how about physically to stay in balance how about mentally yes there too we need to stay in balance what about spiritually you know, many people don't think of that, but we need to be in balance there too. So what happens is we get a set of symptoms or we maybe even get one symptom and that's the body's message to tell us that that's our, you know, what we call homeostasis, right? Homeostasis is the body's way of just staying in perfect balance. And I always like to liken it to a pressure cooker. So, you know, it needs to stay at a perfect temperature and if it starts cooking too much, the pressure builds and builds and builds and builds. And so as the pressure builds, you know, our body wants to throw out a symptom because that can bring it down. And we, we always need to stay about this certain pressure, let's say, using this analogy. 
So it throws out a symptom. Maybe it's on her skin, maybe it's a headache, maybe it's an inflammation, maybe it's a backache, maybe it's an eczema. It doesn't matter what it is. Our body needs that to come out because it's needing that symptom to go out so that the, the core, the being, the pressure in the pot needs to stay you know, in homeostasis. And pretty soon another symptom comes out and another symptom comes out. And so what does Western medicine do? Well, they just suppress these symptoms. They put cream on their arms to take away the rashes. You know, they give anti-inflammatory pills and for headaches or backaches or whatever it is. And they give antidepressants if a person's depressed. And so the body's never allowed to have any of its own symptoms to express. So therefore, when you start pushing them in, you're pushing them back into the pot. And what's that doing? It's like, oh, you know what it feels like? You know, the pressure cooker, man, it's cooking and it's full and it feels like it's going to explode. And if you just keep suppressing the symptoms and you keep pushing them in and keep pushing them in and keep pushing them in, you first of all, if your body's strong enough, it's going to push them back out again. So for example, Let's say you have a skin rash, because that's gonna be our case today, it's a skin case. So let's say you have a skin rash and you put that, um, let's say you're a child and you have a skin rash and your mom takes you to a doctor and they put cortisone on, because that's the usual treatment, and they put it on and then it goes away and then soon it comes back. And so the doctor says, okay, we need to put more cortisone on. So they do it again and then it comes back. So the mom takes, the kid to the doctor again and they put it on and this time it doesn't come back but this time the kid gets asthma and so you go hmm asthma okay so a doctor would tell you eczema and the asthma they're not related they're totally separate nothing's totally separate you know we we have to learn this this is what medicine doesn't get nothing is totally separate it matters so if a person comes to you with asthma then i always say did you ever have eczema as a kid or any time in your life and if they say yes because most times they will then you say did you ever get you know steroid cream put on your on your eczema or your psoriasis and most of the time they say yes because that's what happens you suppress it you push it in body pushes it out you put the cream on, it goes in, body pushes it out. One day you put the cream on, the body goes, ah, oh, I'm not strong enough to push it out anymore. Okay, now it can't come out. So now it's gonna break down a more important organ, something internal, like the lungs, like the heart, like whatever. So, you know, out on your skin, it doesn't look good but it's the safest place to have something because it's certainly better than having in your lungs or something wrong with your heart or your liver. So this is what the body does. It first pushes things out and eventually as it loses its strength, it can't push it out anymore. And so then it starts going deeper. And this is what we say, it goes deeper and deeper. And the doctors don't get it. They don't say, oh, this kid has asthma and now he has eczema and then we suppress that and now he has seizures and then we so do you see it just goes on and on and on until it gets somehow to the brain so and it keeps going because we keep just filling our kids with poisons from vaccines and all the gosh the chemicals and now i think in california you see on the news all these pictures of these houses just just oh filled with flame retardants that they're dumping to save the house and Thank God they can save the house, but just imagine just all the car carcinog carcinogens and these flame retardants. Oh, it's, it's horrible. We live in a really toxic world. And so our body has a lot to do to just survive in this world. And I always say, if you're not detoxing, then you're not gonna live a long life. It just, it needs to be part of our everyday routine. It needs to be our daily diet, it needs to be our lifestyle. It's as important as sleeping and breathing clean air and drinking clean water now. Detox, detox, detox. And so when we talk about detox, you know, what, what, what is it that, what are, that we have to do? What is it exactly? Because detox is kind of a fad, you know, now is a thing. Oh, I did a week juice fast, okay, that's great. 
But that is like not even a drop in the bucket, you guys. When I say detox, I mean, you, you guys know I'm the detox queen, but I think I should change that and say the detox warrior because detox is not always easy. And sometimes you have to go through a lot of stuff, man. It's a lot of crap sometimes and you feel like giving up. But, you know, it's a wave. You ride the waves. There's some great days and then there's some not so great days and you, you just deal with it. But in general, you can your great days are great and you feel fantastic. And then you go through another wave and you go, oh, God, you know, my back or my sciatica. Like I just had that. I'm do, been doing this intense detox and, and um, I'll tell you more about my experience as we go along. But you know, just out of the blue, like I can get this like horrible sciatic. I haven't had it for a long, long time, but I know it's my detox because my diet's really clean and we're taking all these herbs and I'm really, really working on cleaning my lymph system and pushing out and cleaning my kidneys and trying to get kidney filtration and really working hard, harder than ever before because I understand it better than I ever did before. And, you know, for months, my back was like the best ever. And then I go through these waves like, whoa, really working on pushing something out right now. And yeah, and th thankfully, I just took a remedy. I wasn't even going to do this video because I was like, oh, I can't stand still because my sciatica is killing me and I feel better when it's moving around. But that's a clue to what remedy I need. So I just took a nice dose of rust tox because they're better when they're gently moving and this is how it felt and worse lying down and it's already better like really it's gone so this is the beauty of homeopathy I love it I can help you know a lot of my clients and my patients you know when you're working on detox you can go through a really some really pretty big crises but I feel as a homeopath I can do so much to help my clients out of these crises because homeopathy is like really the best tool to have. You're not interfering, you're not suppressing. It's it's so great. So, anyways, you know we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot about this because as I said before, you know you're not sick, you're just toxic, and there is no such thing as diseases. So let's just let that word go. I know it's a really hard one. We gotta work on it because we've been really trained that, you know, we have a disease, whether it's the big C disease, you know, cancer, or whether it's an autoimmune disease, but we just need to let all that go. It's, then it's so less intimidating because whether you have cancer or a lipoma or a headache or a backache, we all just have toxins we got to get rid of and getting rid of toxins will get rid of all of that. So we're not I'm not giving any medical advice. I'm not giving you any advice. I'm just telling you what I know because my job is not to dish out medical advice. I'm not a doctor, but I can certainly tell you how to detox because I've been on this journey for a really a long time in my life, you know, and I've been on a healing journey and learning natural healing, what I like to call nature's medicine for most of my life. So I just want to share my experiences and it's not like I'm telling anybody to do anything, but I give you my opinion of what I think. And I just want people to know that if you think you have a disease, then you've lost your power because what are you going to do? You're, you're going to feel hopeless. You're going to feel like you need drugs. You're going to feel like you have no way to get better, but that's not true. You're just toxic. It's, you know, we have all different levels and so many of us came into this lifetime with a lot of toxins already like for example if you have green eyes like me <laughs> brownish yellowish i was always told oh you have beautiful gold they're gold but that's not good i used to love that compliment but not anymore since i am learning iridology and i go geez that's just my congested lymph over the top of my blue eyes so if you guys stay with me long enough and I can live long enough to detox this stuff out of my eyes, you're going to get to see me with blue eyes and maybe over the years you'll see them change slowly because they do take a while, but they do. So, okay, well, let's get to the email. So I'm going to log into my computer here 
and I'm going to answer Deanna's question because she wrote me a little while ago and I asked her to sit tight because I'm trying to learn videos and how to do this. But Deanna's problem is she has eczema and here I'm going to read her message because I don't want to put words into anybody's mouth so I'm just going to read her email. I was a vegetarian for several years and turned vegan last September. I have digestive issues that have improved since I've been on a vegan diet. Yay! The more raw food I eat, the better my stomach feels. Well, let's just stop right there. So how good is that? The more raw food she eats, the better she feels. You know, we have to learn to listen to our body because there's a lot of people who eat raw food and they can't handle it because they say it's harder to digest. So let's say a person is trying to go raw and then they do worse. You need to listen to your body because if it's hard for you to go raw, like eating a lot of salads and stuff like that, then you just need to start doing more smoothies and eat. First of all, I would say, even to Deanne, I'm saying congratulations. First, I'm going from vegetarian to vegan. That's a big step. If you guys have done that, you know, vegetarian <laughs> seems so easy after you go vegan, right? And vegan seems so easy after you go raw. And raw seems so easy when you go all fruit. So every step gets kind of harder. But anyways, I do want to say, you know, we want, it, we want to be always positive. And it's a great step that she went from vegetarian to vegan. So that's good. And raw, fantastic. Because that is the, the healthiest diet, the one that will help you eliminate all your symptoms over, over time. But we want to hone in now and be more specific than just raw. So she says that her, the more raw food she eats, the better her stomach feels. She tries to eat a lot of detoxifying food. So I want to, I would like, you know, this is why I wish I could sit and have this interview with her here so that you guys could watch how this goes because my question is okay well when you say you're eating a lot of detoxifying food like what does that mean some people might think detoxifying food is you know just plain steamed vegetables or they might say um eating a lot of beets cooked beets because they're really healthy for the liver and the gallbladder and they're a col considered a cholagog food which is really good for that area and other people might say i'm eating a lot of salads or i'm doing a lot of green juices right okay well i need to know what you mean when you say i'm eating a lot of detoxifying food because if you're eating a lot of salads and well, let's start first with steamed veggies or cooked veggies. That, those are not big detoxifying foods. This is something we have to learn. So what is a detoxifying food? What do you guys guess it is? The most detoxifying food category. Fruit, 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 fruit. So if you're eating a lot of fruit, like high, like 80, 90% of your diet every day is fruit, then I would say, that you're eating a lot of detoxifying food. But if you're eating a lot of raw salads and even some cooked veggies, then you're not eating a lot of detoxifying food. You're eating a lot of healthy food, a lot of a lot raw food. It's kind of like a pyramid, right? So, you know, a salad would be a little more detoxifying than a cooked vegetable, but it's still not nearly as detoxifying as a piece of raw fruit. And then even from raw fruit, if we mono fruit, like eat a whole bowl of mangoes or a whole bowl of berries, and instead of just mixing them all together, that's another notch up. And even doing a juice is another notch up. So you can, there's lots of ways to increase the level of detoxification. So Deanna says she's eaten a lot of detoxifying food, but I'm not sure what that is. So that's important and you'll see why in a minute here. She said, I started having issues with eczemas in my 30s and I'm still having problems and I'm in my 40s. Okay, so my first question is, you know, when she said I started having problems with my eczema in my 30s, but why her 30s? You know, most people that have eczema tell me they've had it you know, in their elbows or sometimes in the crease of their elbows or the backs of their knees 
right and they had them when they were a kid so you always want to ask why did you get your eczema in your 30s or you they might say i don't know that's why i'm here right i came to you because i i don't know why i have my eczema but then i say what happened in your 30s what was your life like in your 30s did you go through any stresses you know the 30s can be what is it? I think it's the Japanese have something that every 17 years you go through a cycle, so that would put you at 34, right? And that was certainly the case for me because I remember when I was going through hard times, that's what my Japanese friends told me. So, but there's a lot of transformations and, you know, sometimes they feel not like transformations, but they feel like the horrible stuff, but in the end it's a transformation. So, do you see where I'm going? You get an email like this and there's so many questions I have and this is because I'm only bad. I just ask a million questions because I can't prescribe a remedy without knowing the cause or what happened. And you don't always get to know the cause, but you certainly have to investigate around. So that's my question, Deanna. What happened in your 30s? Did, did you go through any trauma? Did you go through a grief? Was there any big hormonal shift like did you have your first kid or was there an emotional component that happened in your 30s did you get a job or lose a job were you under more stress than usual did you take a certain vaccination or did you you know I have all all these kind of questions so that would really matter at least homeopathically but we're not we're not going to prescribe you know anything because that's not what we're doing we're just going to kind of talk about health and how we need to look at it and to give people suggestions of why our body's getting sick and how to get it better so then she goes on to say doctors couldn't figure out my issues with nausea and stomach pain and they don't know the cause of my eczema so she says they didn't know why she was nauseous all the time and all her stomach problems and they didn't know the cause of her eczema. So this is so common, you guys. People are going to the doctors and the doctors don't have any answers. And you know, they don't know why you have the stomach problems. They don't know why you're nauseous. And what can they do? You, you know, it's like they're so limited and it's not really their fault, but they're becoming more of the problem now than the solution because they're giving drugs because that's all they're trained to do. They either give you a drug, right? Or they run a test and they tell you they don't know what you have. And the drug is certainly not the, the answer. That's gonna make it worse because now they're suppressing the symptom and you're throwing that right back into that pot like we were talking about. And I mean, you're getting nauseous. You're getting nauseous and you, you have digestive issues. And now on her own, she says, the more raw food I eat, the better I feel. But the medical world, they're not even trained in food and nutrition. And most of the doctors are eating a horrible diet themselves. Who are they gonna be to preach to their patients to eat a vegan diet or a raw food diet when they're eating animal products three meals a day likely? And they don't even believe in food as medicine. They don't even have one minute of training in it. It's so sad, but it's also like a lame excuse anymore. Medicine just needs to change. It's just flat out wrong. And you guys are gonna hear me go on a lot of rants because I am not happy what's going on in the medical world. They're, they're literally hurting people in my opinion. And this has just gotta stop because homeopaths, we see patients after they've been harmed by what they have had to go through with their doctor, all the invasive tests they've done, all the horrible poison of treatments they've done. And what, for what? They're still, they're still, now they're worse because now they're more toxic and they're more suppressed and they still have their original symptom. And now they're more hopeless and more depressed. So I, oh yeah. I almost have to say, be careful, don't get me started on that. Most of my friends know, I'm not kidding here. So anyway, she says, all the doctors do is prescribe me cream for my eczema. Of course, 
This is all they're trained to do. It's so sad. You you want help, you know, like you do you shouldn't have to be the expert to in everything in life, right? But it's almost become that way that you can't really trust in in people that are going to help you. If you were sick as a kid, you thought if you go to the doctor, the doctor's going to help you because he's a doctor and he's trained to help me feel better and to make me get better. And But what's getting better? Getting better is being healed, right? Getting rid of your symptoms in a natural, healthy way that's not going to make me sicker. And they, they can't do that. You go to a lawyer and, you know, they end up screwing you over or they make some horrible mistake and then you got to learn so much about the law yourself so that you know who to pick to help you. It's out of control. So this is, you know, they're just doing what they can do, but it's so worthless what they can do. And it's not only just worthless, it's flat out dangerous what they're doing, especially like a dermatologist. Everything they do is suppressive. They cut off tumors. They cut off cancers. They cut off moles. They put on cream and suppress every rash. They suppress every, uh, you know, boil. And it's everything they do is suppressive. It's scary. So, of course, they prescribe a nat natural cream, steroids, cortisone. This is what they, it's not natural. But I said, I meant to say, of course, they naturally would prescribe some kind of steroid or cortisone cream. And she says, I don't have any allergies. The natural treatment for eczemas, like essential oils and other natural treatments, they don't work for me. The prescription cream is the only thing that works. I don't want to be reliant on the cream anymore. My diet is 95% unprocessed, plant-based, whole foods. Can you help? Thank you, Deanna. Okay, so first of all, Deanna, I want to say this, that even the natural treatments like the essential oils that you were talking about and other treatments, everything is going to be suppressive unless you treat this from the deepest cause, the root cause. and Look, 20 years ago, I thought I knew what the cause was of many people's, let's say, symptoms, right? And every year that I investigated more, researched more, studied more, learned more, I realized that there was even another level of a deeper cause. So, for example, you could say a person with skin problems usually has a liver, a toxic liver, and that's true. I found that in my practice all the time. So you could say that the skin problem is due to a toxic liver, but that's what I thought was the deepest cause by giving homeopathic remedies to stimulate the liver and to clean the liver and to, you know, help people detox in other ways, then I could get their skin better and I did. But really, you have to go a step further and you have to say, but why is their liver toxic? Especially in this case, she didn't get it till she was in her 30s. So what happened? Was there one moment? And if there wasn't and there was no moment, then to me, that's just like a slow build up and then your body goes, whoa, enough toxic overload. <laughs> Out goes the symptoms on your skin. Done. Maybe it's an environmental toxin that you had to breathe where you were living, Deanna, and your body goes up to here and says can't take it anymore so yeah we you know maybe it's the years before you were vegetarian building up and it's all it's all kind of responsible right there's unless it's an emotional one really emotional event then it's just a slow buildup of we'll just call poisons right environmental food whatever so it's good that your diet's 94 five percent unprocessed fantastic but to fix this we need to step it up another notch now i'm happy that the more raw food you eat the better you feel because you need to step that up i would say that what you really need to do to heal this is you need to do all fruit you need to this is this is toxins and the, be thankful deanna that your body that your vital force of your body 
that your, if you want to call it your immune system, but that your vital energy of your body is strong enough to keep pushing this back out on your skin, even after you've used the cream. I had a patient like this, she had horrible skin problems, and then she put the cream on, and she of course got asthma, because as I told you, you suppress the skin, then you get asthma. So we worked on the asthma, and then the skin stuff comes back, and then it's horrible because it's on their hands and they can't do things and it's hard to do, put your hands in water and you have a kid and you have to do dishes and I get it, you have to work and it's all over your hands or wherever, your face and it's horrible having skin stuff because it looks bad and people are embarrassed, they don't want it exposed, I get it. But just because I feel sorry for them and, and I have compassion because they have this on their skin and it's horrible, I can't tell them that it's okay to suppress it because it's not, it's just not. Nature just has a way of healing and we don't, we can't say, oh, please nature, let me just cover this up this time. No, it doesn't work like that. It just, it has to run its course. It has to do it in the right order. So you need to come to terms with the idea that every time you use that cream, you're just pushing pushing it in deeper and one day it's not going to push it back out on your skin and you're going to think you got rid of it but you didn't because you don't get rid of eczema and skin eruptions with cream prescription cream you just don't so if it doesn't come back that's because now your body's losing its vital strength to push it back out and you're going to be affected internally so you really want to deal with this Deanna on it on a deeper level and what I would do is you know, the natural things, if, if you could find a natural thing to help you through the process, right, while your diet and your detox is working, that's probably, you know, the best thing I could tell you. So what, would, what, would, what can I advise you? So first I would say detox, detox, detox. The number one way to do that is eat as much fruit as possible. Try, and you know, you just have to know this, fruit is a highly detoxifying food. And when you start this, as the case with a remedy, as the case with a lot of natural, you know, natural remedies or nature's medicines, when you take them and they work, sometimes your situation has to get a little bit worse before it gets better. So you might go, oh my God, this isn't working. My skin is worse than ever before. And suddenly it turns the corner and then it goes the other way but you've got some detoxing to do and what's what's toxic here you know let's think about this is it our skin that's toxic is it our blood that's toxic and as you guys know I've, I've mentioned a little bit before on my podcast so those of you that haven't listened to my podcast I want to talk a little bit about this idea because the main reason why we're all toxic is because you have to understand the way the body works we have blood and we are so our bodies made of blood lymph fluid lymph you know fluid and a little bit of water and so our blood is 25 percent of our body but our lymph fluid is 75 percent and what is our lymph system anyway does anybody know have you has your doctor talked to you about your lymph system maybe being toxic no have you heard Anybody talk to you about your lymph system possibly being toxic? No, I've been in the health industry for so many years and I've been searching for people to teach me about how to detoxify the lymph system because the lymph system is our, D, is our sewer system. Let's call it our sewer system. It's our sewer system. Dr. Moore says, you know, if your toilet backed up, would you just say oh the toilet's backed up and you just overflow it or would you go remove the sewer pipe and not you know clean it out you just don't worry about it that would never work it would back up it would be horrible but that's what's happening and that's what's happening with you Deanna it's just that your lymph system is so um, toxic and congested and you're not unusual believe me we all are we all are, and it manifests very differently. But the reason I'm telling you that is because the lymph system is our natural, you know, we have to clean that out. It's our natural sewer system. And every cell, you know, 
takes in nutrition or food and also excretes a waste or cell poop, let's call it. I like that. So our cells eat and then they poop and that cellular waste, you know, also known as metabolic waste, it goes into our lymph system because our lymph system surrounds every single cell and our lymph system is like 75 trillion cells. So we have what well, we have 75 trillion cells in our lymph system is surrounding all of those. So you can imagine that we need this, this fluid, this lymph fluid to be able to kind of clean itself out. Well, how's it going to clean itself? Cause did you know our lymph system doesn't have a pump? Our heart has a pump, but our lymph system doesn't. So that's why people jump a little bit on treadmills because it gets the lymph system moving. You've seen, I have one of these, it's like a squeeze machine. You put your arms and legs in this thing and it pumps your, your, your limbs like this and it moves the lymphatic system and the lymphatic vessels to like push, push and pull so that the toxins come out. So we really need to do something actively for our lymph system. Otherwise it doesn't detox on its own. Believe me, and this is the number one right reason why everybody's sick because nobody knows about the lymph system. Nobody knows how to detox it. Well, I should say nobody anymore. Thank God for Dr. Morse because he's the one that has exposed the whole just all the science behind the lymph system and he's taught thousands now of practitioners. Thankfully, I'm one of those and I learned so much even though I already knew so much about health and detox when I recently just decided to do his uh, level one cer cer certification. But honestly, I still learned so much because the lymphatic system is something I've been searching for and nobody could tell me anything about it. I've had a couple people on my show, I tried to ask them more about it, but there just were no answers because they don't, they don't know it. So the thing you need to work on, Deanna, is cleaning your lymph system, but you can't work on cleaning your lymph system without working on cleaning your kidneys. And I want you to know this, that your lymph system, you know, it drains, we're going to just call it drain because that's the kind of a homeopathic term that we use for detox. So they call them drainage remedies to help your organs in your systems drain out the toxins, right? So, but your lymph system, it, when it gets rid of the waste, it sends it to two places, the kidneys or the skin. And you know, we have two kidneys. They're located in our low back right here on either side, right and left. And the right kidney helps the right side of our body drain because we have lymph nodes in our neck. We have lymph nodes under our arm. We have lymph nodes in our groin and we have lymph nodes in our spine. And so believe it or not, you know, I know a lot of people donate kidneys, but you need both of your kidneys. The right one is to drain the right side of your body and the left one is to drain the left side of your body. And so we need to work on those kidneys. One of the reasons why that lymph system is dirty and toxic is because your kidneys are no longer able to get those toxins out. So now think about this. We have two channels, the skin and the kidneys. And we have 75 trillion cells that are eating and pooping and they poop into our lymph fluid and our lymph fluid needs to get the waste out, but it can't because our kidneys aren't functioning well enough anymore. And our skin is totally clogged up for in your case, especially because you have eczema. So some people might be not sweating and then you can see their skin isn't working, but other people are sweating, sweating, sweating. And it's a compensation because their body's going, my gosh, I can't, I can't get my, my waste out the kidney. So I'm just going to try to get as many out as my, through my skin. Because remember the body's always trying to find homeostasis, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's throwing symptoms out, your body's putting that eczema on your skin because that's what it needs it to do while it's trying to find some kind of balance, but we don't like that. And we want to get rid of that eczema so that it can be in balance and you don't have to have that. So step it up with your diet. Things you can do is, you know, uh, do a lot of fruit juices, try breakfast and lunch, all fruit, and then just do a salad at night. And then you're all raw, but then you're high fruit. And then step it up after that, do that for a couple weeks. 
And then after that, step it up and try to do three or four days, just all fruit, even for dinner. You know, there's lots of good fruits out right now. You can do watermelons are an amazing food for the kidneys. Uh, I, I do a lot of oranges and orange, right now orange juice because it's Valencia oranges, grapefruits, pineapples, what else do I have? Gosh, bananas, dates, mangoes, grapes. I mean, just go at it, you know? And if you really wanna get this going and you have the courage and the willpower to do it, try a grape fast where you eat only grapes and do it for 20 days if you can. And you, I wouldn't be surprised if your eczema wasn't gone on a 20 day grape fast. Sometimes it needs 30. There's people, you can read about it. There's a little old book you can buy. I think it's called The Grape Diet. Lloyd and I just did 11 days, not just, but about a month ago, 11 days on grapes. It was not that hard, but it's hard more mentally, you know, but you're, it's amazing. Grapes are so filling, you're never hungry. Unbelievable, really, and do, more a lot of juices you can eat the grapes too if you if you're eating all the grapes that i don't know why this is but they can be constipating because of the skin so they tell you in this book if you're eating them you have to kind of go slowly so if you're having that problem just juice them because the juice is even more it's like rocket fuel man you'll feel so energetic but when we did our 11 day grape fast man the first two days i was going through detox stuff and i was feeling already we've been doing this all fruit thing and you know fruit and salads but mostly we're doing like four days even five days all fruit and then the other day we're doing all all uh, just fruit and a salad one day and fruit and a raw meal like maybe a couple other salads or i might do like a raw bread that i make but anyways we're we were we're clean and we did this grape diet and oh my god Lloyd's whole tongue, like the layer of his tongue just came off. You can Google it. There's so many people that have healed everything on a great diet. So there's lots of things you can do here. But a lot of it, Deanna, is going to come from your diet, just taking it up another notch. You only have this eczema because your body's toxic. And what part of your body, you know, if it's on your skin, then I would say you really, really have to work your lymphatic system. You won't have all our symptoms, no matter what it is, even from a, a cyst, a tumor, a cancer, it doesn't matter. It's all only coming from a toxic lymph system. So we gotta move the lymph. We gotta get the lymph moving and move it on out, but it's hard work to get those kidneys working again. So saunas are really great to sweat because that's how our lymph system can push those toxins out is through our skin and our kidneys, right? And then we're gonna do a lot of talking here about kidney filtration because this is the key to good health. But if you can, go listen to my podcast I did on uh, just, it was the last one, and it was Dr. Morse, and we talked a lot about kidney filtration, and you'll really understand the importance of why we gotta get our kidneys filtering. We're, we're gonna do a whole show on that. So really step it up with the fruit if you can. Try to, try to do it like this. I would do fruit and salads and do that for, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks. And because I don't wanna push you too fast into fruit in case you get too much of a healing crisis. And especially when you have skin stuff, it's not fun. And then after that, try to go the next two weeks eating four days all fruit and the other three days fruit and a salad. So that would take you through, say, like a month because you'll have done two weeks and two weeks. And then see if you can get the courage and the willpower to do a 20-day grape fast. Really, I, I can tell you it's incredible. It, will, it fixes so many things. And try to buy that little book. You can get it on Amazon. It's called The Grape Diet. It's a purple cover with a little bunch of grapes. Old, old small book. Great story, the lady, you gotta read this book, it's amazing. There only, there's only a few sentences I'd scratch out of it and it was something about eating some kind of like cream or cottage cheese or something after this, I went, what? Anyways, cause she goes on to talk about all the fruit and the, and the raw and stuff, but I don't know, there's a couple places in there she mentions eating stuff like this and I wanted to tear that page out of the book, but try it and google people who've done grape diets there's people on it 40 days 90 days i know somebody you can't believe what they're getting out of their bowel 
when they're 40 days. I've seen pictures of people holding something up that's like the whole length of their bowel, like because we get this, what people are called mucoid plaque. Now, whether that's real or not, what they're getting out is real, let me tell you. So we have a lot of crap caked on our colon wall. And um, I just wanna tell you, Deanna, if you would take a picture of your eye, you know, there's a certain way you have to do it close and maybe I can tell you a little bit more when I see a picture of your eye. But just for now, the number one thing you have to do is you have to detox by really eating detoxifying foods, which means fruit, 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 fruit. Keep eating as much fruit as you can. And then I just want to say this, remember that the only reason you have this is because your lymph system is clogged and it's drained. It's like lymphatic constipation and you can't, you can't move it and you can't, it doesn't have anywhere to go and it's just backed up. And when that happens, now the metabolic waste that our cells poop out, which is very acidic, is sitting into our lymph system and it can't go anywhere. So you can see now what, what it means when we say we're acidic or that we have acidosis. So everybody is acidic pretty much now because everybody's toxic and there's different levels and most people are highly acidic. And so um, we're gonna, this is what the whole, my whole YouTube channel is about, you know, detoxifying and regenerating and using homeopathy and other natural remedies and, and the proper diet. And our proper diet is, is raw, raw food and fruit. And maybe when we're well, maybe when we've done this for a couple years and we feel well, maybe then we can say, okay, then, you know, because I believe ultimately the, the most sustainable healthy diet would be high raw because one of the problems I've always had with a raw food diet is that, you know, I did raw food for about six months, but geez, I was just eating so many fats and nuts because every single recipe, look, if you're eating fruit, no problem, but when I was doing raw food, I wanted, I wanted to eat, let's say, a dinner, if it wasn't just a salad, and I thought, oh, I'd like to make something, so you make these little, like, veggie patties or little meatballs or a kind of meatloaf, you know, but everything's nuts, nuts, nuts. And all desserts are like cups of coconut oil and oh, avocado, and it's just fat, 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 even though avocado is healthy. And I'm not a big believer in just eating oil, whether it's coconut oil or any oil, to just, I'd rather, you know, eat whole foods. So I just said, this isn't healthy. I'm just eating cups and cups and cups of nuts and fats. It just doesn't make sense. I'd rather eat some cooked veggies. So ultimately, I think if your diet is 80% raw, when you're detoxed, right now, I can't eat like that because I have too much work to do and I don't know how long it'll, I'll have to eat like this, but you know, my eyes will tell, my body will tell me, but right now I'm just on the road. I'm just wanting to get my, my back to regenerate. I wanna, you know, I wanna get these symptoms better and I wanna get my eyes cleaner, which shows that I have a lot of congested lymph sitting on top of my blue iris, which looks gold. That's, and that we'll do more iridology as we go along. So really work on diet and step it up and see if you feel, can feel better. And let's see how your skin does on fruit, Deanna, and make sure you write me back and let me know how you're doing. And the second thing I wanna recommend is colonics because um, personally I had a lot of patients who had skin stuff, of course. Homeopaths get a lot of skin patients. It's a very common problem. But I always found a relationship with the liver and the bowel and eczema or any other skin problems. So I always used the homeopathic remedies to kind of stimulate their bowel and we call them bowel nosodes. They're not so easy. You can't really get them on your own. You would need to do it through a homeopath. So I'm not sure where you live, but maybe you could also work with a homeopath. The only problem I have about that is sometimes when you go work with anybody, but let's say in this case, if you go work with a homeopath and they don't understand what I'm talking about with this detox and fruit, and they've never even heard of that, or they don't know anything about Dr. Morse and all the people that he's healed and trained and the 300,000 people 
that have gotten better in his clinic and you know then they're going to tell you oh you don't need to do that and then you're kind of like trying to listen to part of their information that they're telling you to do but then it doesn't feel right to like not do what they're telling you to do and then you get in a kind of bind because it's unfortunate you know that you can't go to someone that that has it all together but you kind of got to use the homeopath for homeopathy and then you got to make a decision on your own about the nutrition that sounds right for you it's not necessarily that you need to work with a nutritionist but you certainly need to you know find listen and listen to your intuition and see what's right and and try you know and try but just try fruit you'll see what i'm talking about so i would definitely do some colonics because i had i had patients and i had my best friend she had horrible eczema for oh, i don't know must have been 20 years it was all over her scalp and all over her stomach i don't know at that time it was psoriasis or eczema but it was horrible and she tried everything she tried everything like psychic healers and everything everything and she got herself better doing a bunch of colonics and it was i was shocked i couldn't believe it helped her so try that because you know obviously it's all about toxicity you wouldn't have any of this on your skin if you didn't have a toxic lymph system but your kidneys aren't filtering and what does filtering mean it means when you pee in a jar in the morning you should see sediment in your urine if you don't see stuff floating around in your urine i mean you can google kidney filtration you'll see people they get like sand this deep at the bottom of their jar when they're filtering i'm just starting to filter if you look down sometimes my urine's cloudy that's good it's a, and then it settles and you'll see a little bit of filtration sometimes it's like a cobweb in the bottom of the urine are floating around and sometimes it's just like a little crystals in the bottom but it's you'll you'll see I'll bet you when you pee in your jar Deanna that it's clear and you have no filtration so that just means your kidneys need to get working your skin needs some help and that's because your lymph system needs a way out and it and you're just totally backed up if your kidneys and your skin are clogged which they are then you don't have anywhere else for it to go and it's just going to keep becoming more acidic and the situation is going to get more critical not just on your skin but lots more can happen when you become more acidic so you need to take care of this right away so you know the protocol that Dr. Morse uses is he makes some very potent and powerful herbs and if you can afford it I highly recommend that you take the the like he's got a little package called the fab four and you could start with that and you could start with the the fab four has the lymph herbal tincture in there the endocrine herbal tincture in there the bowel there's like a bottle of bowel pills you pick which number one through five depending on how many bowel movements you have and the kidneys so it has bowel uh, lymph kidneys and endocrine and that's like the basics and uh, I would probably add the skin tincture in there for you and it, and if you start on herbs are powerful powerful medicine and you know since I did my training with Dr. Morse I now use his herbs because they're so strong and so powerful and they're really fantastic really he's one of the best herbalists in the world in my opinion so if you can afford to do that but you know you can just do it one step at a time and just be kind to yourself it's not easy to transition to a fruititarian diet but you know you, you'll you'll see the benefits and you'll feel the energy it's crazy the energy you get on this diet and then homeopathically you know there's some things that i think could help you but i think you know unfortunately they would be something that i think you need to see a practitioner because they're not just simple remedies I can tell you to go buy at a store but it would be like something for your liver and something for your bowel like a bowel nosod and and a liver remedy to aid in those cleaning out and so if you can find a homeopath maybe you can ask them those questions if if they're able to help you you know detox your bowel and your liver out and see what they say but let's let's leave it at that and let's start from there and and i hope this has helped you and i hope you guys have learned something 
So that's it. There's so much to talk about always, you guys. And even though it's going to sound like a broken record, I'm super excited to do this. And I hope you can hang in there and you'll just learn so much because it's really not that complicated once you really learn why we're all broken and how we can get ourselves all better in the same way, no matter what our symptoms are. So on that note, you guys, I'm going to sign off and say good night and I love you. And you know, as I've told you before, if you're not using anyone's Amazon banner and you use Amazon for your shopping, I'd so appreciate if you use the one that's on my website. And if you want to donate, you can go to my website and donate. It's so, you know, it's so nice when you guys do that. And I, I really appreciate everything. Just, just subscribing. I appreciate it. And anyways, it's, we're all in this together and I just want to help everyone as much as I can. And I want you guys to pass it on and help people, not just in your family, but tell your friends and let's just get the world better because the planet is sick and there's really a lot of sick people. So Deanna, all my best and I hope this can help you and, and write me and let me know, you know, your thoughts on this and if you do it and how you're doing. Okay. All right, you guys, have a great night. I love you. Bye.